All right, here you can see we've got three panels in and you can see a demonstration. You can see what the clamps look like once they're installed, okay? It doesn't take a lot of torque. I am using a Makita impact gun just because it's easy, but believe me, I'm not just standing on the trigger on it, okay? You, you know, don't you don't need to do that, okay? In fact, all you really need to do is just a little, I mean, that's, you don't need them that tight. Okay, so, when it comes down to doing a weep for real, make sure we put it down on the rail like so, okay? And it slides back and forth. And you just gently lift the panel up and slide it into the weave up against this little tab, okay? You wanna make sure that that little nipple is under the panel, otherwise the weave doesn't work. Okay, so you do it there. And you do it there, okay? Now, when you do, when you're using weaves, you only do every other connection because we have one weave in this run here, but one weave grounds this panel to the rail and this panel to the rail at the same time. So to do a weave right here is redundant. You don't need to do it. You can if you want, but you don't have to. So every other one, and now we've got a weave going here. So now we're going to pick up a panel and set it in place. Now this is all one single string. So the panels are being wired in series, meaning that the positive side of one panel connects to the negative side of the next panel. And that's the way we're doing it here. So the last panel we did has our positive terminal at the top. So which is, here's the positive next to the uh, ID sticker here. So on this particular panel, we are going to spin it around so that the negative's on top. Okay. And then all we're going to do is carefully get it close to being in line with the next panel before you start to engage the weeb. Close. And then just simply set it up on top of the weeb. And on the next one, we'll do the same thing. Okay, both are on top of the weebs. Slide it downhill just a little bit. And I'll even take this level and just come along here and check how we're doing. It's close. Actually, what I want to do is get the clamp on first because these are self-spacing. Now you need the bolt in there first. Just stick it down there, give it a little twist. Stick it in there, give it a little twist. Like so. Like so. Give it a nice little shove in so it's nice and tight up against the clip. And then we'll just make sure we're all in a nice straight line. Looks like it needs to come downhill just a little bit. That's too much. Just like that, right there. Give it a final shove in.
that is on there very snugly, securely. Now, um, probably should have made my connection first, but I still can. We're working with MC connectors, and that makes it really nice and easy. Okay. So at this point, it's always a good thing to continually check your, your string voltage as you go to make sure that you haven't made any mistakes. Now these panels are doing about 26 some odd volts at the moment each. So um, we should be able to measure from this side of the, of the string to the other side of the string. And we should have somewhere around I would say it was somewhere over 100 volts. And we do, we have 112.2 volts. Actually I have the polarity backwards, but same thing. So everything is nominal so far. This lets us know that we are in fact wiring it correctly. So every time I add a panel to the string it should increase by around 26 some odd volts each at a time. So the next one ought to be somewhere around um, almost 140. So or two yeah 140 so. All right we're gonna keep going so for now solar is gonna keep going. Today's episode is brought to you by Outback Power Systems. And we like Outback here at Solar Nation for all your off-grid and grid interactive needs. Outback Power Systems, aye mate.